All right, so in this lesson, I want to do a brief code walk of lab one. Since lab one is a pretty important lab for getting started in this course, it's for our setup of SDL and OpenGL. So let's go ahead and navigate into the directory for lab one, and we'll see a couple files here. And anytime you have a project, you should probably start by finding the main source code. And in this case, it's going to be in the source directory. I'm going to go ahead and just type in tree so you can get an idea of how most of these labs and assignments are going to be structured. Where the source directory contains all of the C++ files, and you'll have header files here in the include directory, such as the SDL graphics program.hpp. These are also good to look at so you can see what kind of functions are available. But let's go ahead and start from our main function here. I'm going to go ahead and open it up in Vim, and it's in our source directory here. So. Let me make it a little bit smaller just so we can get a higher level view of our program here. And what we're going to see here is all of our graphics programs in this class, for the most part, are going to consist of the SDL graphics program. This is our object. It's a global object, and well, globals are a little bit beyond the scope of how we might want to handle them in this course, but I just want you to know that we're going to do things a little bit uh, easy, make them easier on ourselves here by having a global here for the SDL graphics program. It's going to create a window that's 1280 by 720. And this third parameter here, which is a 1, uh, sort of gives us the state of the window that we want to create, or the context type. And we'll talk about that in a moment here. And then we'll notice if we scroll down here, we've got some functions like preloop, input, and if I keep scrolling down here, update, and render. And these functions are important because they're the functions that are going to get called every time in our OpenGL program when we run it. So let me continue illustrating that point here when I scroll down to our actual main function here. Now you'll notice there's actually not too much going on here, and that's a good thing. It's a nice clean program. We're going to print out that we're entering our program. That's just for you to know. Get some information about OpenGL, and then set up some of these callback functions here, and then loop here. So let me illustrate what our program is going to do essentially for every graphics program that we write. So what I have here, again, is our global SDL graphics program. That's the object that's created, and it's globally available anywhere in our program in our main. So it's a little bit dangerous, again, globals, but we're going to go ahead and do it to make things a little bit easy. And within this program, you'll notice that we have this function here called loop. And that implies that we're going to be doing something over and over and over again. In fact, in our graphics programs, we're usually going to be doing something in an infinite loop. And that might be different than other types of programs that you've written, but it's going to run until we tell it to terminate. And there's a few other functions here at lines 82, 83, 84 that you'll notice setting up these callbacks. So before our loop is called, we have a pre-loop function that's called. And that's called before we enter our loop here in this box. And then we have an input function that's called, a update function that's called, and a render function that's called. And these three functions, input, update, and render, are called over and over and over again in this order until we tell our program to stop. So that's just a little illustration of what's going on here. So if I go ahead and scroll back up here, you'll notice I have these functions that have been defined here, input, pre-loop, and so on, that have been called. Now these functions here are just regular C style functions, or C++. There's nothing object oriented about them, they're just functions. But you'll notice, for instance, with render, it's passed in as a parameter to our G SDL graphics program dot set render callback member function here. So that means it's taking in this function as a parameter here. So we've set those functions such that if we look at our loop function, which I'll do now by splitting my window here and looking at the source and navigating to set render callback here, you'll notice that all I'm doing is taking in this parameter here, that's our render function, and setting it to a function pointer. Just like we can have pointers to variables, we can have pointers to functions. And if I look in my loop function, it's actually quite simple. The loop here is called until we tell it to quit. And it calls each of our function pointers. 
Okay, so these are function pointers here. And this was our function pointer render func that was assigned to the thing that we passed in. That's this render function here. Now this might be new or even a little bit overwhelming for you, but it'll make a little bit of sense as we get some more practice with C++. But what makes this nice is you can basically ignore the implementation in the header file for now and just spend time looking in our main program and do all of your coding here for when you want to render something, update it, or whatever you want to do with input. And then pre-loop is useful if you want to set anything up. So that's just a little bit about the structure of our program. Now let me zoom out a little bit more just to give you a further view here. And let me go ahead and do the next thing, which I recommend is to take a look at the header file here. Then go ahead and on the right side of the screen, open the header file up. Now the header file contains the interface. That says, how are we going to do things in our STL graphics program? It's sort of the blueprint, okay? Whereas on the left side, the .cpp is our implementation of all of these member functions for our STL graphics program. So you'll see some familiar sites here. Our constructor, taking in three parameters, the window width, window height, and the context type, which I will get to. All of our setup functions and some other helper functions here, like if you want to terminate the loop, uh, get a pointer to the window, figure out your OpenGL information, or set the clear color, for instance, as a helper function. There's also some private member functions here. And here you'll see that list of function pointers here. Again, the syntax is a little bit weird, but all this is stating is it's a, a void uh, function pointer that has no parameters. So you'll see this syntax here. And you sort of work your way inside out. So it's a pointer that's declared with the asterisks here. And the parameters or the arguments for this function are void, they're nothing. And this function returns nothing. So that's how we declare function pointers. OK, and then there's a couple of useful uh, other member variables here for different things that we'll want to do, like perhaps storing the background color of our window. Now, let me get to this context type thing here. And I'll scroll up to our constructor. Structures have no return type. They're just declared as follows. And you'll notice this third parameter is the context type. So there's two different types of SDL windows that we'll create. If I pass in 0 as the integer here, then we'll just create a regular SDL window. And I've got a function already built for you to do that. If we pass in 1, we'll create a window that's enabled for hardware accelerated graphics using the OpenGL API. And that's what, during the setup, I want you to be able to do. Just be able to set up a window so I know early on if you can run OpenGL. We're going to be working in just regular SDL windows when we do software rendering. And when we do hardware acceleration, we'll do OpenGL window here. OK, so just something to note. Now, by now you're curious what this lab does and how to build it. Again, for our support code, most of the time it's going to look the same. And what you'll be doing is there's a build.py file here. So if you look in build.py, you'll see that there's really a, a bunch of comments here and then some information about what compiler we're using, where the source is, and what your executable is going to be. And then a conditional block if you're using Linux, Mac, or Windows for how to build this project. So if you go ahead and just type out python3 build.py, and I'll make this a little bit bigger, and hit enter, it'll show you how exactly you're compiling. So I can actually just copy this and paste it in uh, as well, uh, or change this if I want to uh, in the file. And you should see at this point a new lab file here. So I'll execute it by doing dot slash lab. It's going to execute our program. So it's popped up on my other screen here, and you should see a window like this. And if you press a button, it'll change the background color, which is your objective to figure out how to press some buttons, one, two, or three, and change the color. I'll give you some experience with the code base so far as you get started in this course. The other thing I want you to pay attention to, so I'm just going to click this X here to terminate, is what version of OpenGL you're using. And you can find this here. I'm looking for, or hoping for, most folks will have version 4.3, so we can do more stuff on the cutting edge. But to get through this class, you just need 3.3. Most people who are using a virtual machine, such as VirtualBox, should be able to get at least version 3.3. I'll be able to do 95% of the stuff that we talk about in this class, if not all of it. 
All right, so that's it for this intro. Hopefully this is helpful. Walk through through the code base. Do take some time to explore the code, read some of the comments, and ask any questions if you have any. Take care.